Hello and welcome to Loppy Loves. If you haven't been here before, my name is Lauren and on this channel I talk about my life as an immigrant living in Iceland. So when this video uploads, which is hopefully tomorrow, if I edit it in time, it will be the fifth anniversary of me living in Iceland, be May the 4th. And as I do every year, I just wanted to film a video about how my life is at the moment, uh, because I like to have the record of how my life progresses while I live here. And this is a big year. This is year number five. Um, that's half a decade living in Iceland, which is a little bit scary to me, honestly. So this shouldn't be a long video, although I often say that and it turns out being longer than what I planned. So I'm just going to go through what's going on in my life, how I'm feeling about being here and maybe what I might do in the future, I guess. Well, first of all, now that I've been here five years, I will be eligible to apply for permanent residency, which will make me feel a little bit more secure, I think. Uh, you can apply for permanent residency after you've been here for five years and it means I have a little bit more freedom to come back to Iceland if I do need to move out of the country for a short period for some reason. Although if I do leave the country and come back, uh, the clock resets for me applying for citizenship, I believe. So I have no intention of leaving, but if there was an emergency or something that I had to leave for, it's a bit more security for me. And I am so close now to being able to apply for citizenship. I just have two years left and I'm most of the way there now, which is very exciting. And the first big life update I want to share is that I am moving in with my boyfriend. Um, this wasn't the plan, we just discussed it about two weeks ago, I think, and we have decided that I will move into his apartment. Um, it works out better for both of us financially and it's just less stress for me like cleaning my own apartment when I'm hardly there and running my business and a bit more freedom if I leave my job um, yeah it just works out better overall so that's exciting and moving on from that we have also been discussing maybe saving up to buy a plot of land not straight away we don't have the money but start saving up uh, just to buy a plot of land somewhere. It might be a plot for a summer house um, or just a plot of land, ideally, if we can get that, um, to start growing some vegetables and just start uh, moving towards self-sufficiency, which we would both like in an ideal world. So, yeah, that's a kind of long-term plan, but that's recently what has been discussed. We have also recently discussed uh, long-term plans for if we want to stay in Selfos. Um, we both love it here, it's his hometown and I feel at home here. But Selfos is expanding very quickly um, and it's starting to feel like eventually it might turn into another Reykjavik um, and we don't want to live in a bigger town like that. We quite like that we live in a little country town. Even if it is the biggest town in South Iceland, it is still absolutely tiny. Um, so we were talking a few weeks ago about if Selfos ever did get to the point of be becoming another Reykjavik basically, where we would move to. And I think we'd still stay in South Iceland, we wouldn't move too far away but to one of the smaller towns. But if it came to it, I think I would be up for moving to Borgunes in West Iceland because I really love that town. But that's not the plan anytime soon, it's just long, long term if Selfos continues to expand at the rate it currently is because it is expanding really quickly. <laughs> Another life update is my business, Ender Livka Jewellery. Um, I have just received my second order for the Beluga Whale Sanctuary, which is the sea life centre in Vestmannaeyja, uh, the little island off South Iceland. They contacted me a couple of months ago for a sample order of 
whale earrings or whale fluke tail earrings to sell in their gift shop. The sanctuary opened for the summer and within three weeks they sold out of my earrings and they requested another order of 20 pairs uh, the day before I went to England. I, I just got back from England today so I will be working on those within the next week and hopefully that will pick up more and I will get more and more orders from the whale sanctuary. I absolutely adore the Sea Life Centre, I always have, I love that company so I'm really happy that they have chosen my jewellery to sell in their gift shop. So that is really exciting and that looks to be very promising but we'll see what happens there. One of the biggest updates and a little bit scary for me is in two days time or the day after this video is published I will be doing my driving test. <laughs> um, hopefully I'll pass it but we'll see. I finally did my driving theory test a few weeks ago and I passed first time and then my driving test is booked for this Thursday and I'm very nervous. Um, we'll see how it goes. So my learner's permit, um, feels weird saying that but I guess that's what we call it here, it, it expires on the 5th of June. I can apply for an extension but it's a little bit of hassle so I want to get it done before then and the test is on the 5th of May so it's very very last minute that I'm doing this but I finally just feel I'm at a point to get it done and I just want it out of the way honestly because um, then I never have to do it again so I really hope that I pass and if not then I will just try to do it again before the beginning of June and hopefully pass then. I'm most nervous about the questions at the beginning. There's like an oral exam before you get into the car and you have to get three out of five questions right to get into the car to do the exam. And I am not confident on the questions, but hopefully it will be okay. The driving itself, I think I will be fine. Fingers crossed. <laughs> within the last year, well within the last six months actually, I have had two visits to England to see my family after two years away because of Covid and I have a third visit at the end of June so it's about a month and a half away so that's three visits very close together um, but it had been two years since I'd last been um, and it's just been really nice actually to go back and it's weird when I go back now it's not home it doesn't feel like home, Selfoss is home now and Birmingham is not home but it's still nice to go back and have a visit and see some old friends. Yeah, it's really lovely. And going on from that, even though I'm not from the countryside, I am from a huge city in England. Um, the, I had to take a plane to London and then get the bus from London to Birmingham. And on the way we were passing just loads of fields and countryside and it was beautiful. And in the last couple of months I was thinking about this but it confirmed it last week when we were driving to Birmingham. Um, I am fortunate enough to be fairly well travelled and I live in this stunning country but I have decided that the most beautiful thing in the world to me is the English countryside which I always found so boring when I was younger but to me it really is the most beautiful place in the world. <laughs> and it feels weird to have come to that conclusion after living for five years in this beautiful country where we have so much beautiful nature just on our doorsteps but yeah the English countryside is absolutely stunning to me <laughs> and I used to just find it so boring um, but that's interesting now. Uh, within the last year I have become a lot more confident speaking Icelandic um, just in general actually but especially in kind of more formal situations um, like doctor's appointments I've had lots of lots of doctor's appointments especially in the last few months um, I will usually use English still when it's medical just because I need to understand 100% of what is being said um, although if I go to A&E I will use Icelandic depending on the situation like a few months ago uh, a cereal bought me some roses and as I was cutting the stems to put them in water I cut my finger open 
and we had to go to A&E because it was quite a deep cut um, and that was all in Icelandic I didn't have to switch to English once um, but for other medical things I will use English and I am also now more confident speaking English in those situations um, I used to always feel really ashamed about having to switch to English or wanting to switch to English and now I don't feel any shame about it anymore like I need to understand and people are more open to it I think than what I thought before or maybe people are just becoming more open to it um, I'm not getting questioned as much about like well you've been here and you don't speak Icelandic you live here I do um, but I just don't in medical appointments and some doctors think that's fair enough and some of them aren't even asking actually I had to go to A&E a couple of weeks ago for a different incident at work and when I was called in the nurse didn't even ask me if I spoke English or Icelandic she just looked at my name and just spoke to me in English which is a lot more comfortable than being asked and telling them you want to speak English but yeah I feel more comfortable speaking both Icelandic and English here now which is good and finally and probably the most exciting for me is that I've started reading my first full-length book in Icelandic um, normally I have the short stories that are just made for foreigners or kids books which are not that fun to read but when we were travelling to England last week my boyfriend just showed me this book because of the title uh, this just means out to kill tourists and we both found it hilarious but I had a look in it and it's actually written in like a really simple way it's not written like you know I don't want to say grammatically it's written the way you would speak is what I feel and it's a little easier to understand and if I have any problems I just ask my boyfriend what a phrase means or what a word means and actually quite a few phrases that I asked him what they meant right at the beginning are coming up over and over again and then I know what they mean so I'm learning them and it is actually a really good book it's quite funny um, I am reading it a lot slower than I would in English I'm quite a fast reader it'll probably take me quite a while to finish this but I am proud that I am finally at the point where I can read something like this, like a full adult book. Yeah, it's not for kids, it's for adults. So that is about it. Um, yeah, this video really is just for me to keep track every year of how my life is progressing. Um, yeah, but if you like it, just leave a thumbs up or a comment below and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next video. Bye!